back again after the longest hiatus in my fucking life. We're back and in a new location. So just to catch all up on life a little bit, my mom and I actually just bought a new house. So I've been spending most of my time moving and doing a bunch of crazy stuff. And a couple of things have happened and I bought some stuff for the car that I'm excited to show y'all today. Just wanted to catch y'all up a little bit. This is the new garage bachelor pad. actually never had a house where we could fit the cars in the garage and I still don't but this is the best we're gonna get for right now just because we still have some stuff to clean up in the background but she is looking nice just a few things that I gotta fix on her she is leaking a little bit not enough to where my oil level has gone down the next thing though I've been keeping these a secret for about what month now so right after we moved a really good deal came up I had I had to make the call had to make the purchase so um look at that Look at this, baby. We got Weds Crans Vishnu's. Yeah, really blessed to have these. A good deal came up and I've been looking at buying these wheels for like, God, what, about five, six months now. And the price was never fully right for me. You know, I just never knew what spec I was gonna get. And honestly, I wanted to get bags before I got anything else, just, you know, so I can use this handy dandy fitment tool that Nigel gave me to make sure that I was fender to lip because that's the fitment that I wanted. But like I said, these came up with a good deal and I knew the fitment would be good. They it came off the exact same car, exact same year. The, the fitment was crazy and it's exactly what I wanted and exactly what I envisioned this car to be. So in the rear, I'm running 20 by 11 and a half plus seven. And then in the front, I'm running 20 by 11 plus five. Pretty aggressive fitment. It does have a lot of poke aired up. From what I saw from the last owner and from what I've been told, there's a lot of uh, natural camber that happens when you air out fully. We're gonna find out and I'll be damn, we're gonna make these things work because I, I spent some good money on these. No more running these TSWs, hopefully. But yeah, we're gonna test fit them today. I couldn't run them in the front without a teeny tiny spacer. So I got two five mil spacers sitting there and we're gonna put them on the front and you know see how this fitment is and maybe drive around on it a little bit. So I'm so excited, guys. You have no idea. Suspension's definitely coming next. Shout out to Chris for sending me the link to these as soon as I got the wheels. Little five mil spacers here, super tiny. Praying that this is all that I need to fit on this car. Give me your wheels now. YouTube, don't cancel me. <laughs> yeah, yes. It looked like an SS. <laughs> Shout out to Preston for saucing me this Craftsman torque wrench, half inch. You're the man. I don't think it takes my lug nuts off, but I'm very inexperienced with this type of technology, but it's a start. So I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. It just can't take them off. I'm <laughs> Why do you say that every single vlog? <laughs> this man has to make a comment about his race <laughs> though, at like every single vlog. <laughs> Guys, it's not me here. It's not the white boy. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it Fuck off. All right, so taking off one side, we're gonna put one side on and then go put the other side. We're not as bougie. We don't have a lift or anything. So we're using manual labor. Chris Johnson should be on the way any moment. To tell us how much of a dipshits we are. So it's okay. We, we live and we learn guys. You don't learn unless you go through it. You can't learn everything the easy way. We're definitely going through it. We are definitely going through yeah, this it. This whole car almost fell on the fucking floor. Yeah, one of our jack stands did kind of go crooked. <laughs> But it's okay. Like I said, you live and you learn. Guys, learn through me. Do not do this dumb ass shit. No oh, <laughs> Just caught all that on camera. So I busted my ass right there. My back cramped up. We're gonna try this shit again. Hopefully I don't fall on my ass. Incoming fall. Nope. 
Dude, for some reason, the wheels I used to have on them were so heavy. These are so light compared to those. Look at that, guys. That's the first test fit. From what the guy told me is, in order to fit these, I have to actually roll my fenders because there is a little bit of a lip here. But I do have the tool. I'm just waiting for it to get a little bit warmer so I don't crack my paint. I will be rolling my fenders at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna ride it like this. I don't think there's enough play in my air suspension for it to hit my fender. Let's go put it on the front side. Five mil spacer is on. The reason I bought that is because it was hitting my brake caliper. As you can see here, it took a little bit of the paint off. That's how much it was hitting it. Um, but it was only hitting it by a little bit. So hopefully, Five millimeters is all I need. Not, nah, we're gonna find out momentarily. Just waiting for you to bust your ass. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's talking all this shit when he runs eight and a half wides and his wheels are like featherweight. Like an eight and a half NKs. Hey, don't be mad. Mad at what? That you got trash fitment? I don't got trash fitment. Y'all comment tough. below who's gonna have better I'm just, fitment. I'm just tough. Of course, you're gonna have better fitment because you're gonna be fended a lip. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you don't even have no suspension to be fended a lip. So you're gonna be out here looking like a donk. <laughs> <laughs> That's that lifestyle you rep, right, Chris? No, see, here come the racist joke. Y'all, y'all report his account now. Is this on there? Yeah. That actually seems bigger than five mil. Put your finger in there. That's bigger than a five mil. Because it's not on there all the way. It's not? No, it's not even on the. <laughs> you don't even have it on the shit, bro. There's no. <laughs> you don't even have it on there. Bro, what was... the fuck? <laughs> it was resting on the great A dumbass right here. Oh yeah, great no. A dumbass. <laughs> I'm an absolute dipshit. Yeah. Alright, you know what? Since Chris talking so much shit, I'll let him put this front one on. Come here, give me the camera. Give me the camera. Hi guys. We're gonna watch Chris put this shit on and watch she's gonna show me up and I'm gonna go inside and cry. Better not scratch my chrome. See, I just can't get that low. Chris got that aired out fitment right now. Look at that, he aired out all the way. Oh, look who's struggling now, guys. Is it rubbing? Is it money? Oh y'all look at that. Oh yeah, that's five mil, alright. <laughs> Those scratches are there from before. Good. You should, you should turn the car on. In case you guys didn't know, when you have cars with factory air, I don't know if this is true about all of them, but I've heard this is true about a couple Mercedes and my Lexus. I'm pretty sure it's the same across the board. The thing is, when you have those air cups, it has a system inside that tells you when there's too much air in the cup so it doesn't blow up. When it's fully extended like this and you turn on the car, the sensors will actually freak out and be like, oh man, there's too much air in here. We gotta go down. So it drops all the way to the ground, loses all the air in the cup, and then takes about two, three minutes for it to go back up. There's actually a module that you can buy for this car. It's like 800 bucks from China to your factory air suspension and you can lower it and raise it. The only caveat is that when you do raise it, it'll take about a minute or two to like go up to full height. Honestly, I don't trust these factory air cups that much. So we're gonna put the lug nuts on and then see how it fits when it's on the ground. So you ready for this? Yeah. Are you ready to see this? I'm ready for the Mexicano poke cuz. I want to see the wheels like three feet out the car. Damn. <laughs> Actually, that ain't that bad. Feel, put your finger inside the brake, by the brake caliper. Barely clear it. Oh my God. <laughs> Does it spin though? Yeah, yeah it's, it, she spins. It doesn't rub? No. Look at that. Look at how is this not that bad? This is fucking atrocious. Try to get pulled over by Gwinnett PD for unsafe vehicle or some shit. That's where you got. That's a ticket. Too much camber being too low and all that's an actual citation. I won't have to worry about camber or low right now. <laughs> Cause like, look at this. Folks, careful at drive throughs parking lots, like yeah. everything. So this is how it used to be. And then, good lord, bro. You need to, a solid like three and a half inches. There ain't no way. <laughs> This is how this is. It where are the coils? I need to eat my cheeseburger. I was in a rush and I stopped at McDonald's and I fucking hate McDonald's cheeseburgers, but I got one because I haven't ate since like eight. So I was hungry. <laughs> so we're gonna try and do the other side, and hopefully something will happen for us where it's not as slanted. But inevitably, I'm gonna have to turn the car on, and it might be doing that stuff with the bags. No, then none of that should be flat. Is it flat? Extremely low. Well, f or you just like 8,000 pounds and just. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to I'm not that big. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You asshole. <laughs> Professionals. <laughs> mechanics. Mechanics. We are mechanics. 
So it turns out that the car did sit a little bit when uh, we turned it on, you know, the air cups kind of adjusted, which I've never noticed it doing that before if you didn't have the car on in the air. It didn't adjust by much, but it lowered itself a, a little bit. So the other version would be it dropping all the- What the f are y'all doing? We're breaking shit up. My neighbors are gonna f murder me. Can you stop? God, Jesus, I'm trying to film here. <laughs> So the fitment's looking even better. I would show y'all, but he just re ugga dugga my shit. The rear is uh, at like six PSI. So we're gonna inflate it and hope that it's not gonna like de-beat itself or whatever, but go to like quick trip and put it back up to spec. I'm gonna go put this in the car. Chris is a G, not the other Chris cause his car is too small. Cause he <laughs> First of all, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're outside a quick trip just getting some more air for the tires and then this front one right here that we're filling up now was at about 20 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and fill them all up to about 40 to prevent de-beating and stuff I, I don't really know too much about any of that I need to still do my research learn Chris knows a lot and should work out but we'll see it drives a little rough right now there's a little bit of play in the steering wheel but that could be a number of things but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill them up to all of the same and make sure that there's nothing else going on stop it a lot and then if they sat for a minute he wouldn't know if you guys look right there, you'll see the bubbles here. So we went and we filled up all the tires to like about 40 PSI. That one dropped down to like 35. That's all bubbles right there. So it's air leak, it's from the valve stems. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be running the big meat Larry Hoovers. I did still wanna show you guys cause it's just these two. So one rear and one front. <laughs> I can't even run like a staggered setup. <laughs> but you're gonna wanna order valve stems from either like Evasive Motorsports or somewhere nice. And you're gonna wanna probably call them and be like, hey, I got these wheels will these work because i know like on uh on meisters and uh, meisters tees and all that sh they all use a certain size valve stem these might be the same thing or they might be different i mean how often does stuff like this happen should only happen like every couple of years if that like so when you go get your tires changed at mavis or whoever they're supposed to change the valve stem seal on tires that have tpms sensors so there's kits just to replace that for tires that don't have tpms there's just the rubber normal valve stems and you cut pull it out and put a new one in it's a full replacement and it's full rubber could wake up early and just check the pressures on them. They I right, then you I right. if they're below like 30 by the time you wake up, go ahead change these shits out around and forever hold our peace. Yeah, I would leave them and just check it because it'll take 10 minutes to change out one wheel if that. If you replace Ford with anal for every Ford car, right? It just sounds like good that way, you know what I'm saying? Anal escape. <laughs> Sounds like a fans. sex resort. <laughs> That's a <laughs> Nissan. <laughs> oh shit, that is a <laughs> Anal Explorer. Is there an anal Nissan car that would sound funny? Anal 370Z. <laughs> anal 370. <laughs> Anals. Let's put a Z at the end of it. Super duty anal. <laughs> anal <laughs> fusion. Anal fusion. <laughs> anal flex. Anal muscle. <laughs> <laughs> anal GT, like a racing version of anal, built for speed. Give me that shit. Look, anal transit. <laughs> <laughs> Every other word that comes out of Chris's mouth is gonna be anal. Sounds like a very bad sex toy. Anal F-150. Anal f 150 times. <laughs> Get our new sex toy, anal f Anal F-150. <laughs> or upgrade to anal super duty. <laughs> You gotta add in a 6.7 or 7.3 Voltage. <laughs> Voltage. <laughs> you wanna get banged? Get an anal transit 150 crew. <laughs> So when it's all said and done, we went ahead and went back to the TSWs instead of saying screw it and keeping the hot boy wheels on solely because I just didn't want to be fucked with sitting there and checking the tire pressure every day or, you know, every chance I got. Other than that, it was a hell of an experience. I've never gotten wheels before or any aftermarket parts or stuff like that. So it was just surreal to me to be able to do that and you know finally feel like I'm doing something you're going somewhere with my build which is it's just really nice and it feels really good and last but not least I really do want to give a shout out to the whole entourage fam for doing something special for me this Christmas um, I'm really sad I didn't get to update you guys because you know I was still in the process of moving no Wi-Fi no setup everything like that but check this out they were generous enough to pitch in and get me my first gimbal and have my first gimbal be 
a DJI Ronin RS2 combo. I mean, look at that. Come on. Seriously, if you guys are watching this, I love every single one of you. You guys have no idea how much this means to me and how much I appreciate this. They gave me this to, to support me, to support my next endeavors and help me out in any way they can. And that's really what family is. And that's what we've wanted to build with this group, with this team. It's something bigger than cars, something bigger than just going out there and having a clean build or only hanging out when car shows happen or stuff like that. We wanted to build a team that can come together to help people in need, to help each other when we need it and do great things together because everybody knows that you didn't learn to walk on your own. You didn't learn to crawl on your own. Somebody was there to teach you and somebody was there to help you. Everybody who's a part of our team has made an impact in my life in so many ways and I will forever be grateful for that. If you know what's good for you, keep the right people around you and make sure that they stay there because trust me, it's worth having them around. Thank you guys for watching again. It's good to be back. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.